Good morning. Okay, so this is going to be the last video that I do with you for um, the side of Easter. Simply because, really, there's not a huge amount more that I need to be able to do specifically with you. Um, because you, you, at the stage now, you need to kind of get on with it, really. So what I want to have a look at this morning is um, some sample paragraphs that I've written. Um, just to give you an idea of how we can then layer up and build up some of your responses. Now, thank you very much for those of you who have done your um, exploding of quotes. They're absolutely brilliant. If you want to start colour coding them so you can then identify the, the structure aspects that you've picked up on, that'd be really good, as well as the um, language parts, that'd be really, really excellent. So you can make sure you bring that in. One thing I do need you to make sure that you do is that when you are writing again remember you sprinkle in that aspect with about um owen and frost and making sure that it's remember it's like your salt it's like that seasoning because that's part of the why thing remember that's part to do with um the writer's effects so back into the computer room uh if you see the books that we've got today we've got gardening book that's a marshmallow book that's a homebrew book then we've got this one here, which you can't quite see. Eat yourself healthy, healthy. Hairy bikers, one pot wonders. Then we've got Paul Hollywood, a pie book, and another pie book. I quite like pies. Okay. So, that's what you are currently sitting on. Oh, and this one here, which you can't see because it's just underneath the camera. Uh, jams and chutneys. Right, I've got my cup of coffee. There we are. Nice pretty cup. Okay, so, I've put this onto iTunes for you. One thing you'll have to do is um, just kind of pause a little bit so that the video can then upload. The other video is already um, uploaded, it's already happily on iTunes um, and on YouTube. And we've got subscribers, that's just insane. Um, so this one here, as you can see, is a level one. Okay, now the marks for level one aren't very many. Um, but basically what this is, is that you're just going with the what. You're just telling me the what. Nothing more than that. Remember, this is the what, how, and why. And this one here is you are simply telling me the story. Now, we all know the story of the poems. That's fine. But you don't need to tell me. It's not circle time. You don't need to go through it. So the five points that this is what is demonstrating here, it's a basic understanding of the text. We've got a lot better than that. A selection and interpretation of the ideas from the poem is going to be really limited. Okay? So again, that limited word there is going to be and be really really important. Now, as you have all or mostly been in the lessons, my move when we've been doing this, and you've all got all the notes. Actually, we are way beyond limited. So this really, we shouldn't need to spend too much time on this. There is little understanding of language and structure. You don't really know what they are, and how the writer has used language and structure to make their ideas have an effect. Because basically, you're not really sure why they've used those words. Um, it's just a bit of potluck, really, and that's kind of where you're coming from. Um, then we've got, you're able to identify that the writer has used words and that there is a structure, but nothing more. Don't really know why. He starts with the word he. He ends with a word with a question. That's really all that you're going to do, okay? And then your actual use of the poem is really, really limited. So it is almost as if you are, you studied something in first form and you really really trying to recall what it was about and you can't quite remember you're, you're basically you're just making it up okay so that's going to be a level one so when I wrote this okay so this is what it says so it says level one these are two poems about accidents that actually happened the poets Wilfred Owen and Robert Frost have used language and structure which are really effective out out uses lots of strong words which make the accident nasty. Disabled has sad words and it gets more sad by the time you finish reading. So I've actually tried to follow these points here. So this one here, these are two poems about accidents that really happen. So that's the basic understanding of the poem. Okay. So the selection and interpretation of the ideas is limited. Little understanding of the effects that have been achieved here. The poets Wilfred Owen and Robert Frost have used language and structure. They've just picked up the language from the objective, which are really effective. Okay. 
Shout out uses lots of strong words which make the accident nasty. So here, you're able, able to identify that they've used words and that there's an effect, but I haven't used the poem in any, in any way at all. Disabled has used sad words, that's the effect, and it gets more sad, little bit about structure, by the time you finish reading. That's it, nothing more, okay? So I don't want us to do that, because actually we have got so much to write about. None of you should be going anywhere near this. And if you are, I will be very, I will be very, very unimpressed and really rather cross. So don't do that. Okay. It's too, too sunny outside to be cross. So we then move into level two. Now when we've been looking at the fifth form uh, responses that we moderated before we closed, um, some of them are in level two. Um, which is a little disappointing, but actually this begins to get a little bit a little bit tricky and requires a lot more of you. So this one here is to do with the what and then evidence and then really nothing much more. So there is some understanding of the poems as opposed to limited understanding. The selection and the interpretation of the poems is valid, it works, it's correct, none of these are wrong, but it's not developed. Okay? So there's some understanding of language that's been used and the development of those ideas through the poem. That's kind of a bit of structure. But again, it's only some understanding. There's not a huge amount of meat there. There's some comment on the effect of the language and or the structure used. Now, if you have a look at this bit here, this is important. Okay, because if you do the or here, uh, commenting on the effect of either one, you are not going to shift above a level two which is going to be really disappointing. Okay, so we need to be careful with that. And then we've got references are valid. So they work, okay, good. But they're not developed much. Which again is up here, it's the what and it's the evidence. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my coffee went down the wrong way. So let's have a look at level two. In Out Out, the poet Robert Frost makes the buzzsaw a piece of machinery yeah, okay, that's an understanding of the poem, that's an interpretation, used to cut wood into an animal. Mm. Okay. Robert Frost makes the buzz saw a piece of machinery used to cut wood into an animal. Now that could be a piece of machinery used to cut wood into an animal. So actually the phrasing here is just a bit mad. Okay. He says that the, in the quote, the buzz saw snarled and rattled. That's an understanding. This makes the buzzsaw come alive and is really scary as an animal from the start of the poem. That's some comment on the effect and language of the structure used. Now, there are a couple of things here that I am going to object to. Okay. And it's going to be this one here. Okay. Said that in the quote. I do not want you to be writing in the quote, okay? What's happened here is that I've not embedded the evidence into my phrase. I've not put it part and parcel of what I want to say. It's not part and parcel of my sentence, okay? He says, quote, no. Your quoting is a verb, okay? If I quote some of what somebody else has said, then that's fine. But this one here needs to be part and parcel of what's going on. And really, all that we've got here is, an inter is a translation. That isn't going to do anything. You're not telling me what you think. You're not showing me any kind of understanding or any sort of detailed interpretation of where we are. No, don't like that. Okay. So please don't do that. You are better. And we've got some brilliant ideas. And I need to make sure that the notes that we had uh, from the board, they're still on iTunes, that the explosions that you have got, that is where your evidence is. That's where your interpretation and your meat is coming from. Now we get to the exciting part. This is when there's a little bit more flesh on the bones, a little bit more texture going on, and we come into level three. If you have a look here, we've now got the what plus the how, 
but you're mainly translating the quotes. You're having a real go, but you're giving me a translation rather than telling me exactly how the individual words are working. Okay? So there is a sound understanding of the poems. And this band is actually quite big. Um, but I'll show you what you need to do to get out of it, which is really important. Okay? The selection and interpretation for the poems are appropriate and relevant to the points being made. They are the right points for the right evidence. Therefore, they work. Okay, so the right points for the right evidence and they work. There is a clear understanding of how the poets have used language and structured their poems. And remember, that is going to be the important part. Let me use that pink. No, it's a red. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, this one here is the most important. If you remember from the level two, there's an and or an or. If you do one or the other, and you don't do both, you are not going to shift out of a level two. And oh, basically getting me to do all the work to try and find any kind of evidence that you've talked about language. Think about what we were doing yesterday, Think about all those little hints, those little words that you can use to show that there is that development of those ideas throughout the, throughout the poems. This is where all of that makes sense. All of that starts earning you marks. Okay, So, a clear understanding of how the poets have used language and how they've structured the poems. How have they moved those ideas forward? How is the boy in Out Out at a different point as to where he was in the beginning? How has that sense of inevitability, remember? moved through the poem how has the soldier in disabled moved back and forth and back and forth and back and forth for his flashbacks how is there a growth in his regret and his despondency from the beginning when he's just waiting to the end when they question why is no one coming to put him to bed why is no one coming to see him to help him okay that progression that movement through the poems is incredibly important if you have any access to this level. And you can do it, I know you can. So, we then have an explanation is given of how language and structure, again, think about that word, achieves the effect in the poems and what the poets wanted. Now, this again is important because it's understanding what poem, what Owen and Frost are doing, okay? So, this is the Frost and this is Owen. Not our Owen, Wilfred. So as an example here for you, so this is a level three one. The poet uses a first person perspective about the soldier in the wheeled chair. Two things, okay? We've got a term. First of all, you've now given me an example you understand what the words are doing. And if you have a look here, a nicely embedded quote. It's part and parcel of my sentence. Let's see what I've done with it. In the first stanza, not a paragraph. Okay, and if you think about the structure and order, I've used the word first stanza, haven't I? That's going to be a little bit about structure. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, but it's there. This gives us an idea about the effect and trauma of fighting in the First World War. Nice. Sound understanding. We get it. When he uses he, embed the quote. Now, what's the problem? When he uses he. When who uses he. That one there needs some changing, doesn't it? So that one needs to be name the poem. So I should have done when Owen, okay, uses he, this means that it is directly about the soldier but could also be about other soldiers too. Now, that is the translation of what that word is going to be about, yeah? The poet also uses a metaphor, nice. Shown in the quote R. Done it again, haven't I? Shown in the quote. Don't need it. Don't need to use those words. Shown through would be better. 
Okay, so here, shown through. And then you put in that quote. You don't need to say in the quote. The poet also uses a metaphor shown in the quote, grr, waiting for dark. Nice embedded quote. Okay, so I'm doing all right now. I'm getting some marks on the board. Getting those points, okay. Have a good quote, lovely. This suggests that the soldier in the wheelchair could be waiting for the day to end or for his life to be over. Yeah, yeah, it's not wrong. It's just not very good, okay? Because, and I know it's not very good because we have done so much better and so much more and your notes are brilliant in comparison to that. This is, to be honest, a bit naff, okay? So, this one here, this suggests the soldier in the wheelchair is waiting for the day to end. Well, kind of that's fairly obvious because he's waiting for dark or for his life to be over. Yeah, yeah it is. What else? What else are we going to develop there? What else are we going to move on? What is missing from this? What is missing from this? We've got the what. We've got the how. What's that? It's the why. Yeah, good. Okay. So the why. Why has he opened the first stanza here? Why has... He uses, why is it important? Why has the metaphor started the poem? Why is it wait, the soldier waiting for dark? Why is that about his death? Why is that going to help us with the structure? Okay, that why part is significantly absent from this question, from this response. Yes, we've got language and structure. Yes, we've got this, but, okay, there is absolutely no whys. That's where your marks come from. It's all very well for you to feature spot. Nice. Okay, with your quotes, brilliant. But I've not done anything with them. And that's the important part. This is when you, sim you go places. Okay? When you actually move in terms of your ideas. So... That's level three. Then we get into level four, and that's new territory. Okay. Oh, my coffee's gone cold. Right. If you have a look here, some of my pinks come through. Okay. But if you look at the amount of writing level one is doing, one, two, three, four, five, six, less six lines, three sentences. One, four sentences compared to level two. A little bit more compact. Okay. Compared to level three, look how much more writing there is. And then a level four. So that stands to reason. The more you write, the more likely, not a prediction, not a guarantee, the more likely you will get more marks simply because you're doing a lot more with the material. However, if you just do a lot of this, you're not gonna do it, it's not, it's not going to work. You actually have to do something with the amount that you're writing, okay? And this is where I want you all to aim for. All of you, absolutely, yes, you as well, okay? So this is level four. This is the what plus the how plus the why. Okay. So level two, level three, level four. This is where the quote explosions come into their own. Everything I get you to do, I do for a reason, not just for fun. Well, maybe for fun, my fun. So same five bullet points. We understand the messages in the poem and there's and is sustained through your response. So everything that you say focuses on the question. And it's how the writers have presented or explored the personal tragedy of those three people, those two people. You're not just randomly telling me a story. 
you are actually writing with a direction. You are actually writing with a focus and a purpose. You select information and your interpretation is detailed and fully supports the points being made. You don't let your points flap around in midair. Okay, they're not fish out of water. They have feet inside the poem. You anchor them in the poem. There is a thorough understanding. This is going to be your explosions. Okay, they're going to be our board notes. We did a huge amount of work. This is where you can start using stuff, remember, in the boxes. Use those phrases that I've already given for you. Thorough understanding of the choices the poets have made in their language. And, again, there it is. And the structure of the poems. Evidence is used well to support these ideas. You don't kind of plop it on and go, oh, just hands. You do something with it. So, this part here. Understand the choices the poets have made. There is nothing accidental about these poems. Everything about these poems, every word, every idea, every reason, ew, that's not done very well, okay, is there from the poets. We know the purpose that, that Wilfred Aaron had. We have his words. We know, we understand what Frost was doing, where he got those ideas from, and what he was trying to do. Remember that I said in the last video, Gabriel was really good in trying to pick up on what Frost was doing, but, 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 there's always a warning, don't give me a potted history, okay? Exploration of the poet's language and structure, there it is again. Including word choices and sentence structure. So this one here is about why has he chosen the word he? Why has he chosen the word hand? Why has he chosen the word supper? Why has he chosen to talk about snarled and rattled, okay? And the sentence structure, that's, that's your sejura. That's going to be why is the um, little, uh, what was the thing with the, the breathing? Um, this is this is an example I'm making up because I haven't got the poems in front of me. Um, with the breathing, you've got those dashes, haven't we? That sentence structure, that's what he's doing. That's why we've got those exclamation marks. That's why we have that sejura. But also, what I want you to think carefully about is the enjambement as well. where there is no punctuation at the end of the line, where we are forced to read and we are rattling through those lines because he's very excited and it's like a list, it's a catalogue and we get that disabled when he's promised all of these amazing things before he signs up and it's going to be um, wearing kilts and, a, and jeweled, um, uh, I can't think now, um, no, it's gone. Um, but he's got pairs, and he's going to be a god and it's going to be cheers and he's going to have medals and it's going to be amazing and you got this really long list and then he, then he starts like oh my goodness me I signed up it was incredible and then unfortunately he goes to war and it's not quite the same okay so you can reference that you can talk about that and that is structure that's, that's fine fine structure and if anything it may even move you out of the four into the five so the evidence that you have chosen is detailed and completely oh works there we are. okay it completely works it's not accidental and you're not you don't choose something and you're kind of struggling to, to do what what to do with that and you end up by telling me the story so let's have a look at, at, a, at a level four here okay owen describes the artist being silly for his face as the soldier reflects on how other people viewed him and his appearance the choice of the word silly oh i've missed off some correct marks here I've got this on my explosions. The choice of the word silly ties in with the fact that this soldier was a young man and almost childlike, especially as his face was younger than his youth. Owen would have fought alongside soldiers who were not old enough to enlist just as the wounded man in the poem because the recruiting officer smiling wrote his lie. Throughout the poem, Owen emphasises the stark contrast between the facade of the propaganda and the promise of glory in comparison to the brutal and tragic reality. Okay. I've got the what, I've got the how, and I've got the why. And in really, in some cases, I might be pushing to the top of this band, kind of edging into the perception here. 
Okay, I'd need to do a little bit more than that, but we're close on this one here. So let's go through it. Owen, name the poet. The poem doesn't do it, the poet chooses it. That is the poet's choices. Describes the art as being silly for his face. So we've got evidence here as well, haven't we? I can't find pink. Okay, silly for his face. I've embedded that. As the soldier reflects, that's what he's doing. That's structure, that's structure, that's brilliant. Okay, uh, what was structure? Oh, perfect. Okay, as he reflects on how other people viewed him and his appearance. A little bit of the what, that's okay. The choice of the word silly. This is the writer. This is what the writer's choosing to do. Language, silly, another quote. This is the why. Ties in with the fact that this soldier was a young man and almost childlike, especially as his face was, insert quote, younger than his years. Now I asked you, when you did your, your quote tables, and we worked through it when we did the quote explosion, is find other places that you can move your idea to. You are not simply going to be a one trick pony, okay? So you have your main quote, and then you allow yourself to branch off into another one. And you actually may find that in your writing of your response, and as you do your paragraphs, which you will need to do nice and gently and sort of build yourself up, that you suddenly have ideas that suddenly start sparking. Amazing. Go with it. Don't feel you have to be a slave to those quote things, okay, those quote explosions, because that's your starting point. Writing a response like that is beautifully organic, um, and it means that your ideas are firing off, and it, it becomes a, a thing of absolute stunning beauty. So, Owen would have fought alongside the soldiers who were not old enough to just as a wounded man in the poem because the recruiting of his smiling wrote his life. That is going to be why. This is what he wants to do. This is what he wants to achieve. This here is the why part. Okay? Throughout the poem, more structure. He emphasises the stark contrasts. That's the technique. So, oh, I've got the right colour. What's the technique on here? What's the technique? technique is yellow. Okay. Um, emphasises, stark contrast. Emphasises, because that's what Owen is doing between the facade of the propaganda and the promise of glory in comparison. Another one. To the brutal and tragic reality. Brilliant. Okay. If I don't say so myself. And then I've moved on because I'm not quite ready to let go of this particular idea. When Owen was writing, he was determined, this is his purpose, this is part of this why, the why, the why is massive, to write the truth no matter how difficult it is to accept. That we got from his words. That's what we got from his words, remember. That's why I put them there for you. And a lot of our discussions have centred around this. His poetry was only published in the 1960s because of the impact his truth that was from his words, remember, that was from that slide, may have had his use of shocking imagery, technique. And you've also given that evaluative pre-modifier, haven't you? So you've actually evaluated the nature of the imagery. It's not happy imagery, it's not lovely imagery, it's not peaceful imagery, it's shocking. So that is evaluating that. And if you have a look here, you understand the message, okay? Thorough understanding, an exploration of the use of the language and the choices. So you're beginning to have this and potentially you're moving up into the five, your top end of four here. So his use of shock and energy through sewn short at the elbow and wearing his ghastly suit of grey shock the reader because they are not the celebratory images of the goal and cheering crowds that the young soldier was promised. So I've gone backwards and forwards. Again, do that, even if you are not following your quotes, in order that they come in the poem, that's okay, that's absolutely fine. Go with what they've done first, then find the evidence. Go to the top, move to the bottom, veer around, bibble about in the middle, that's fine. Okay, and again here, again I've got, I've embedded this quote here. I've done it again there. Now what I haven't done is I haven't written the whole words. Look at this one here. These ones here, I've just chosen the words I want to use. I've used them as part and parcel of my sentence. I've embedded them there, okay? All of those, because they come from different parts of the poem, 
it shows that I, I have, I, I get it. I see how it's moving throughout the piece of writing. This bit here, this is going to be about Owen's intentions, the effect he wants to have. That's lovely. We know that, but that's all I need to do. I'm not then going to talk about when he went to Craig Lockhart in, in Scotland. I'm not going to talk about the fact that he sat next, he had a bed next to Super Freak to Soon. His friend Robert Graves saw the poem. He went back, he was buried alive. It's not relevant. Okay, fun fact, bring it out at a party. Obviously, with your distances. Okay. So, as you should be able to see now, this is where the movement is going. These, this response here, these ideas that we've been picked up here, these have come from those quote explosions. These have come from the notes we've made in class. And one thing that we need to think, think about really carefully now, and very quickly before I finish, is exactly how are you going to structure it. Now, if you have a look at some of these assessment objectives here, Okay, if I have a look again there, and on the threes, and the twos and the ones as well, there's one thing that's missing. It's called compare. You have to cover both poems. You need to make sure they are balanced. If you don't balance them, you will not do very well. Okay, so you need to, ideally, cover both poems, okay? So when you write about both poems, you need to make sure there's a balance. So the first thing we need to do is write about both poems. Yeah? That's the first tick that you need to make sure that you have. Actually, I'm going to put this in a different colour. Okay. Writing about both poems is important because the question is, funnily enough, about both poems. You need to name check the poets. Because they are the ones who wrote the question. The question is how do the poets, not how do the poems, how do the poets. So the question is actually about the poets and their choices. So you need to name check the poems. Don't say in the poem it does this because the poem doesn't do anything. All a poem is is the order of words on a page. That's all it is. Okay, it is the poet that doesn't. You need to make sure that you're careful with that one. You need to embed quotes into your sentences. That means you need to write in sentences, please. Which means that you need to have a full stop followed by a capital letter. Now, I'm not going to go through everything, but this is, this is your, your basic things. You need, as I said there, you need to have quotes, okay? So you actually need to have evidence. Do not vaguely refer. So don't be vague really really boring really boring and I suggest you haven't actually got anything with you which is to be honest it's just a bit silly now in terms of the structure of your answer okay so how you do this so option one okay so option one it's you do I don't know out out Okay, and then you do out, out again. And then you do out, out again. And then you move into disabled. But looking over the fence at out, out. Okay. Equal treatment. Option two, which to be perfectly honest, I think is going to be probably a bit easier because the difficulty about doing this is you you forget or you run out of steam. Option two Okay 
is you have, for example, it doesn't, you don't have to start with out you can start with the disabled, and then you move straight over into disabled. You've already done, there is already there a balance. You then go, I don't know, maybe you've got another point you'd like to move into disabled, you go back to disabled. But actually that moves you nicely over into out out again. And then actually, you know what? That makes me think something else of disabled. So I'm gonna go back into disabled. But I mustn't remember, actually I'm gonna spring back into out out. And I'm gonna do another out out. And then I'm gonna finish off with the disabled. Okay, I've got four here, four there, three here, three here. This one, you're kind of peering over to out out. You don't necessarily have to do huge amounts of reference detail. This one I think is harder because you, you, you're you doing two separate essays. Why do two essays when you can do one? Okay, the way that we've done our quote explosions ties in with this. You don't have to do it like that, you can do out, out, move to disabled. You can then go um, disabled to out, out. And then you can go to out, out, back to disabled. Disabled, back to out, out. Or, okay, or Out, out, disabled. Out, out, disabled. It is entirely down to you, but it's balanced. There's a lot more equity, okay, between the two poems. I will have a look uh, online for you, and I will come up with some, uh, some really nice comparative language, things like... Um, further on or um, in a harsher manner, things like that. So basically, when you compare, okay, there are two types of comparisons. So you have something called a superlative, and that is dealing with an extreme, okay? Okay, so it's either the top end of something or the bottom end. So we've got a nicest. You can't get any nicer than nicest, worst, harshest, okay, um, most dramatic. So words that deal with the absolute extreme. You then have comparative language. So this is when you, you start making points happier. Don't necessarily use these words in your essay, make sure that they, they work. Um, more dramatic. Um, nicer. Uh, be much more worse, much, much worse. So here you've got something with EST, okay? Here it's something with ER. Or you've got the much, the more, or the most, okay? So those are the kind of language that you can do, and it's entirely down to how you manage that. I'll put some examples on to iTunes for you to be able to access, okay? Now, I know this is going to be our last timetable lesson this week, and I know that some of you may still want to do some work on your um, quote explosions. That's fine. We don't normally see each other um, tomorrow because it's a week A still, but if you'd rather not do uh, the yoga or PE with Joe, uh, which is on YouTube, then please to do this. Please crack on. This should take you, boys and girls, this should take you from writing 
about two to three hours. That includes your planning, okay? So your planning, it's kind of like this, really. Okay, it's gonna be this. But rather than just naming the poems, it's gonna be talking about the ideas. The, these parts here are gonna be the ideas you're going to be raising. Okay, so have that little flow chart there for you. It's important to have a plan so you know where you're going and you're not just shooting from the hip and basically making it up as you go along. So there needs to be a nice flow and progression through your writing, just as there is in the poetry. It's exactly the same in your writing. Okay, um, so that's the first part and you should spend about two, I don't know, two and a half hours writing. That's not pen or paper for two and a half hours at all. That is in total two and a half hours, okay? It's a comparative piece. That's roughly what we would expect. Um, you are aiming for a minimum of 800 words, okay? If you don't do that, and really, that's a page and a half. You are so much more than that. You've we've got so much more to say. If you are unable to do that, you are not going to be able to develop and sustain. Oh, where's it gone? There we are. It's there. Look, it's there. You will not be able to sustain your ideas throughout your writing. If you have a look at the three, that word sustain doesn't appear at all. Okay? I don't want you to shortchange yourself. 800 words is a page and a half of about size 12 font or thereabouts. Okay? Do not hand me anything which is in font size 45, Oliver. Okay, doesn't work because I'll change it down and I'm more interested in about the quality of what you are saying than I am in, in about how big your lettering is. So, there's enough for me now, okay? Now you kind of need to crack on. So, over Easter, I'd like you to spend snippets of time drafting. Now, our first draft is going to be rough around the edges, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. It isn't going to be perfect. And I will go through it again and I will give you guidance and I will ask you to kind of extend ideas as well. This is the donkey work. Okay, we've trained, you've got all of the notes around you, you've got everything that you need. Don't forget language and structure. Don't forget the what, how, why. Take the time, maybe the first half an hour of, of your sort of first sitting, if you will. Just surround yourself with notes, get yourself organised, work at what you're doing, making sure... that you're doing this, making sure, and you mustn't forget that you need to talk about language and structure. Can't express that anymore. I do not want you to lose marks simply because you haven't done one particular point, okay? Any questions, post them on iTunes, start a discussion if you need to, we can go through some ideas. If you want to bounce ideas around, I will be there. I'll be obviously able to help you. Gradually sort of pace yourself throughout Easter, okay? And then after Easter, you can then hand it in. So you've actually got quite a long time to do it. Now the issue with having a long time is that you get very little done. I'm a nightmare. If I've got loads of time on my hand, I don't actually get anything done. So I strongly advise, when you're still in the zone, you get it done in the first week. Okay, and then you're done, you, you dusted, hands it over to me, I'll then go through it, and you've got the rest of the Easter entirely to your own. If it rains, oh, that's perfect, you can do it when it rains. That's been marvellous, okay? If you are poorly, that's awful, I'm really, really sorry, I hope you get better soon. But then do what you can when you are better. Very little happens if you were feeling rubbish, okay? I'll post this on, any questions, make sure you ask. And I am really, really rather excited to see what you can do.